In the early 1960s, a radical idea emerged from a private engineering firm, an audacious plan that could end the chronic water shortages plating the western United States and northern Mexico. The plan was massive, continental in scope, and jaw-droppingly expensive. Nicknamed NAWAPA, or the North American Water and Power Alliance, the proposal aimed to redirect vast amounts of water from Alaska and Canada to arid regions thousands of miles away. This wasn't just another pipe dream. It was a legitimate engineering proposal, backed by some of the most influential minds and institutions of the time. At a projected cost of over $1 trillion in today's money, North American Water and Power Alliance promised not just water but energy, jobs, and economic growth across three nations. Let's dive into this fascinating, controversial, and nearly forgotten mega project that could have changed the geography and destiny of a continent, America's Water Woes. To understand North American Water and Power Alliance, we first need to understand why the West needed water so desperately. After World War II, the United States entered a period of explosive growth. Between 1946 and 1964, 76 million babies were born, making up what is now known as the baby boom. That population boom was mirrored by an equally explosive rise in industrial output. Factories once used for wartime production pivoted to peacetime manufacturing cars, appliances, and suburban homes. And all of this growth had one thing in common. It required vast amounts of water. By 1950, Americans were withdrawing around 100 and 80 billion gallons of water per day. Within a decade, that figure had surged to 270 billion gallons. The demand was highest in the arid and semi-arid regions of the country states like California, Arizona, Nevada, and western Texas, where rainfall is minimal and evaporation rates are high. It was not just Americans feeling the pinch. Northern Mexico, facing similar heat and drought, was also experiencing serious water stress. Despite technological advances and massive public works like the Hoover Dam, Parker Dam, and All-American Canal, long-term solutions were desperately needed. Enter Ralph M. Parsons. While the U.S. celebrated its post-war prosperity, one man was looking decades ahead. Ralph M. Parsons, an industrial engineer and founder of the Parsons Corporation, had an eye for scale. His company worked on everything from Air Force rocket test stands to entire ICBM launch complexes and Turkey's first oil refinery. Parsons realized that while the western U.S. was parched, the northern regions of Canada and Alaska were water-rich. Every year, trillions of gallons of fresh water flowed from northern rivers into the Arctic and Pacific Oceans. What if, he wondered, that water could be redirected south instead? Thus was born one of the most ambitious infrastructure proposals in history, NAWAPA, the North American Water and Power Alliance Plan. The North American Water and Power Alliance Plan was a colossal infrastructure proposal to redirect water from the northern regions of North America to arid areas across the continent. It envisioned an immense network of dams, reservoirs, canals, tunnels, and pumping stations stretching from Alaska and northern Canada down through the continental United States and into Mexico. Water would be captured primarily from the Yukon, Leard, and Peace Rivers, with the Rocky Mountain Trench in British Columbia serving as a massive, central 500-mile-long reservoir. Using gravity to minimize pumping costs, the water would flow southward and split eastward to Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado, and southwest to Nevada, California, and northern Mexico. Along its route, hydroelectric stations would generate over 3.8 gigawatts for the U.S. and 2 gigawatts for Mexico. Canada would also benefit, with diversions from the Peace River directed toward the Great Lakes Basin, including a proposed transcontinental canal from Alberta to Lake Superior, to stabilize water levels and seasonal variation. A game changer for three nations. The North American Water and Power Alliance project promised to be a transformative initiative for the United States, Mexico, and Canada. For the U.S., it would have delivered 78 million acre-feet of water annually. Expanding irrigable land 
by 60,000 square miles larger than England and generating enough hydroelectric power for 3 million homes. Mexico, while receiving a smaller portion, would triple its irrigable land and gain valuable electricity from hydropower, stimulating rural development and agricultural growth. Canada stood to benefit through a stabilized Great Lakes system and a reliable water supply to the prairies, enhancing shipping, agriculture, and economic integration. Despite potential environmental concerns, the plan offered a vision of continental resilience in the face of drought and climate change. Too big to build, the costs and risks. The North American Water and Power Alliance project, even by mid-20th century standards of grand ambition, was staggering in scale and cost. Engineering firm Parsons estimated it would involve 369 sub-projects, require 200 million cubic yards of concrete, 30 million tons of steel, 100,000 tons of copper and aluminum, and create around 4 million jobs, both directly and indirectly, with construction projected to span 30 years. The 1964 cost estimate stood at $100 billion over $1 trillion in today's dollars, making it twice as expensive as the entire Eisenhower Interstate Highway System. These immense figures sparked major concerns. Who would finance it? What would happen if one country withdrew midway? And whether the long-term return from water and energy sales, projected by Parsons to cover costs within 50 years, could truly justify such a massive investment? Skepticism persisted despite the project's visionary scope. Environmental alarm bells. By the 1970s, growing environmental awareness in the U.S led to intense criticism of the North American Water and Power Alliance project, which many viewed as ecologically catastrophic. Detractors warned it would disrupt fish migration in Alaskan and Canadian rivers, submerge vast areas of wilderness, forests, and wetlands, and displace indigenous communities, especially in the Yukon, where native populations accounted for over 20% of the region. The Rocky Mountain Trench, a unique ecological zone, faced the threat of irreversible damage. The project's sheer scale and disregard for environmental and cultural impacts led author Peter Hannon to famously label it the hydrologic antichrist, capturing the deep unease it provoked among environmentalists and indigenous advocates alike. Support fades, but the idea lives on. Despite the rising backlash, some political figures continued to champion the plan. Texas Congressman Jim Wright and Utah Senator Frank Moss both voiced strong support. Even Canada's Prime Minister at the time showed tentative interest, but the combination of environmental opposition and enormous costs proved too great a barrier. North American Water and Power Alliance slowly faded into obscurity. That said, the idea didn't completely die. In the 1980s, political activist Lyndon LaRouche and his followers took up the cause, publishing several papers on the potential of the project, including a 100-page economic manifesto titled North American Water and Power Alliance 21 in 2012. Could North American Water and Power Alliance work today? Ironically, the 21st century is experiencing many of the very problems that North American Water and Power Alliance was designed to solve droughts, water scarcity, and climate-driven disruptions. Western states still grapple with dangerously low reservoirs. The Colorado River has reached crisis levels, and Lake Mead is at historic lows. Could a modern, more environmentally conscious version of North American Water and Power Alliance be the solution? The technical feasibility has not changed. Experts then and now agree that the concept is engineeringly possible. The real question is political, economic, and environmental. Would we be willing to invest decades of effort and hundreds of billions of dollars into a project of this scale? Maybe one day. For now, North American Water and Power Alliance remains one of history's most fascinating what-ifs, a reminder of the power of ambition and the challenges of balancing progress with nature. And that's the story of the $1 trillion mega project that could have transformed an entire continent. If you found this mind-blowing, smash that like and hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned, stay curious, and as always, thanks for watching.
and we'll see you in the next one.